Hello and welcome to Just Have a Think and the first programme of 2019, a year that already looks like becoming another historic period of time for all the wrong reasons, with record low winter sea ice cover in the Arctic, an El Nino that's threatening to nudge global temperatures up to levels that might rival 2016, and a world economy on the brink of a global crash. Oh yeah, and here in Britain, the small and apparently completely unresolvable issue of Brexit, which needs to be decided one way or the other by the 29th of March. In the face of these looming calamities, here at Just Have A Think, we're gonna start precisely where we left off just before Christmas, which means we're gonna be taking a close look at some of the global climate change mitigation technologies that are either at inception stage or in development or even coming online at scale in 2019. To kick us off, we're gonna be examining a technology called Ocean Mechanical Thermal Energy Conversion, or OMTEC. The system is the brainchild of Patrick McNulty in the United States. Patrick has 33 years of experience in power plant operations as part of the chemical demilitarization program for the United States government, and also for Florida Power and Light. This is Florida, Miami to be precise. Patrick's insight and invention takes us out from this coastal city and into the deep waters of the Atlantic, where we arrive at what, at first sight, appears to be just another boat in the ocean. But this vessel isn't designed for transport, it's designed for power generation and climate control. To discover the enormous potential contained within, we have to take a look underneath. The open sea here is up to a thousand meters deep, that's well over 3,000 feet. At the bottom, the water is a very chilly six degrees Celsius, but on the surface, it can be more than 22 degrees or 72 degrees Fahrenheit. The Gulf Stream passes the Florida coast, traveling at around six miles an hour, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, as part of the global thermohaline circulation. So let's take a closer look at the system to understand the truly transformational capabilities it offers. Down here, we start to get an idea of the scale of the construction. The main tunnel is over 30 feet or 10 meters in diameter, capturing enormous quantities of constantly flowing, constantly warm water. With a traveling filter screen to keep out contaminants and ensure sea life is not swept into the tunnel. In the center, a second vertical tunnel brings cold water up from the deep waters below. We'll return to this later. In the meantime, we pass by a narrowing of the tunnel known as a venturi. This narrow section creates a drop in pressure which causes an increase in flow speed. And keep that in mind for later too. But still the hidden potential of this concept has not revealed itself. So let's go all the way down to start at the bottom. Down here, the water is very cold, only about six degrees Celsius or about 43 degrees Fahrenheit. A 90 degree bend at the end of this 2,000 foot long insulated pipe allows the deep waters of the Gulf Stream to be captured, once again with the additional protection of a mesh filter, this one being cleaned and maintained by a submersible vehicle. As we follow the water up towards the top of the vertical tunnel, we reach the lower section of the yellow pipework we passed by earlier. Inside this section, there are four giant condensers containing a Freon refrigerant fluid. Freon boils at comparatively low temperatures, typically around 57 degrees Fahrenheit or just below 14 degrees Celsius. Because the pipe is insulated, the water being drawn up from the deep is still cold enough to keep the Freon in its liquid state. But as the fluid flows upwards, it's drawn into evaporators that are bathed in the warm surface water. This takes the temperature of the Freon above its boiling point, and that means a change in state from liquid to gas, which in turn causes an expansion and kinetic movement. The gaseous Freon now takes the course of least resistance, which sends it through the pipework, up onto the top of the platform, and into the electricity generation plant, where it passes over a turbine, which in turn, drives an electrical generator. Now some of you out there watching this might be yelling OTEC at the screen at this point, and sure enough, ocean thermal energy conversion is indeed exactly what we've just described. 
The system's been known about since the early 20th century. But the problem that all OTEC systems face is that the majority of the energy produced by the heat engine is used up to run the powerful pumps needed to push the fluid around the system and to run all the ancillary devices. The result is efficiencies of only about 8%. Patrick McNulty's OMTEC system exploits two natural phenomena of the Gulf Stream to overcome this power loss issue. Let's quickly remind ourselves of the schematic we looked at earlier. Because there are two equal forces being applied to the top and bottom openings, but only a single outlet, the one on the right-hand side of the top tunnel, there'll always be a pressure differential that draws water up the vertical pipe, just like a siphon. And that means there's no need for a pump to do this job, and that is a major saving in system energy requirement. While we're here, let's also consider the temperature of the water leaving the right-hand side of the horizontal tunnel. It will, by definition, be at a lower temperature than the water entering on the left-hand side of the horizontal tunnel. The exact temperature can be carefully controlled by a three-way damper where the two tunnels meet. With enough of these systems in operation, a significant cooling of the surface water could be achieved, which in hurricane-prone areas like the Gulf of Mexico could reduce the strength of a storm to a lower category, reducing the risk of collateral damage at landfall. And at a very, very large scale, something in the order of many thousands of platforms, enough surface cooling could be achieved to produce a short-term lowering of global temperatures, buying our species a few extra decades to sort out our fossil fuel addiction and get our CO2 emissions back under control. Returning to our model though, you'll no doubt have noticed that the system does need circulation pumps at the top end of the condensers to help push the liquid freon up into the evaporators. And the sharp-eyed among you will also be asking where the power for the travelling curtain and any other ancillary items is coming from, if not from the heat engine itself. And that leads us to the second unique differentiator between a standard OTEC system and Patrick McNulty's OMTEC design. You remember we looked at a Venturi section in the horizontal pipe earlier on? Well, nestled inside here at the narrowest point is a 1.5 megawatt tidal turbine, turning constantly in the never-ending flow of the Gulf Stream. Because of the reduction in pressure that the Venturi section creates, the flow rate increases, keeping the turbine turning at a healthy speed. So unlike a normal OTEC system, the Gulf Stream itself, via this turbine, is providing more than enough power to drive all the necessary pumps and filters within the system, as well as run the light and power for the facility, and most probably will still have some residual power left over to feed back into the grid. And because we have a large expanse of flat roof, solar panels can be exploited to provide yet more grid electricity when the sun's shining. There's enough thermal energy in the Gulf Stream alone to power the human species a hundred times over, this stretch of water could easily accommodate many thousands of these platforms, providing all the energy needs for the entire United States of America. And the system could be implemented in several other ocean locations around the globe where similar flow and temperature differentials exist. I discussed OTEC systems in a recent interview with Professor Peter Wadhams, and he recognised the potential benefits of McNulty's additional design features. But this sounds even more interesting because it's an OTEC scheme, but but the prob you're, you're, you're solving the problem of loss of energy in the pumps. Yes. I think it's quite exciting, I must yes. admit, but I was interested to hear your... Yeah, your, it's, it's your... exciting and it's surprising that nobody's thought of that before. It, so, in, but, indeed. Now, just for full disclosure, this is a project that I've also been working on with Patrick to get some of the drawings done, as well as the animation that you've just watched. The project's now moving on to the next stage of development where efficiency and energy generation calculations need to be made so Patrick is now actively seeking academic institutions to join the project and support the research. So if you're working or studying in this field or a related industry, leave a message in the comments section below so that we can get you connected. Lots more technologies coming up in the next few weeks. So if you haven't already done so, please do subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get alerted whenever a new program comes out. And that is as simple as clicking here. That's it for now though. Happy New Year. Thanks very much for watching, have a great week, and remember to just have a think. See you next week.